Honestly, there's a lot of misleading information in this video. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be doing a reaction video to a video that I found on CNBC that is titled, Why Hearing Aids Are So Expensive and How That's Changing. Um, I apologize if this video seems a little bit out of order for my reaction because I'm just going with the flow of their particular video and I just don't feel like it was necessarily constructed that well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Rachel White is a Minnesota public school teacher who suffers from severe hearing loss. Unable to hear her students or afford pricey hearing aids, the 45-year-old contemplated quitting her job. I realized how expensive they were, and I knew on my teacher salary that that wasn't something I was going to be able to afford to do. An estimated 37 to 48 million Americans have some form of hearing difficulty. Despite that, only 14% of people with hearing loss use a hearing aid. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there because there are a lot of Americans who have untreated hearing loss at this point, but the percentage that they gave of 14%, that is inaccurate, that is way too low. We know that the numbers of hearing aid adoption rates are significantly higher than that in the United States. Most recently, we had numbers at around 34%, which honestly is still a little bit on the low side, of course. Um, but when you start looking at other countries that literally give their residents free hearing aids, the adoption rates are only about 10% higher than the United States. And, and yes, they are getting them for free. So we know that that cost of hearing aids is not the main barrier to hearing aid treatment. And it's not just America's aging population that is suffering from hearing loss. With more people tethered to their smartphones, listening to music and watching videos, hearing loss is impacting an even younger demographic. One in six U.S. teens has measurable hearing loss, likely the result of excessive noise exposure. We are at epidemic levels of hearing loss, and it's not just for older individuals. This is for younger individuals as well. In fact, Rachel, the individual who, the teacher who is in this particular uh, piece that they're doing here, she's in her mid 40s and she already has hearing loss. And as you'll find out, it's actually due to a genetic cause based on what they lead us to believe in this video. Rachel White is a teacher with almost two decades of experience. Growing up in Minnesota with a father who was deaf in one ear and a mother who was also hard of hearing, the family compensated by making things louder. TV was always really loud. Radio in the car was always really loud. So when I listened to things, I did it loud too. Attending concerts in her teens and early 20s also impacted her hearing. But it was the resumption of in-person classes with mass students where White discovered how quickly her hearing had declined. I even told my students last year, I said, yell. If you need to yell, yell. It's not that I'm not listening to you, it's that I literally can't hear you. That's pretty typical for someone who has a genetic hearing loss. Hearing female voices and children's voices is very difficult because genetic hearing losses typically affect the low, mid, and high frequency ranges of your hearing. And the low frequency ranges, which give you the perception of volume, are very hard to get when you have that type of hearing loss. So when you have a child or a female talking to you, they don't project the low frequencies like a, typically like a male does. And that creates a significant problem, which means that she needs the children to yell at her just so they're really small voices are audible enough for her to recognize that she's even being talked to. Unable to afford hearing aids, the educator contemplated quitting her job. White teaches a combined class of fourth and fifth graders, 27 students in total. You know, next to my family, this is like my whole life. To think that I would have to completely change everything. I can't even express how sad it was for me. A social media post she sent got the attention of hearing aid manufacturer Starkey. The company's CEO responded and offered to outfit White with a pair of new hearing aids. This is pretty typical of Starkey, one of the major hearing aid manufacturers out there. I don't think there's a more philanthropic organization that exists uh, beyond Starkey. I mean, I think Starkey, is, they do it the right way when it comes to helping out individuals who have accessibility and affordability issues for sure. And it's not just teachers like White who have been impacted by hearing loss. Of the more than 1.9 million U.S. soldiers who served in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, about 8% have been diagnosed with hearing loss, 6.5% with tinnitus, and 6.2% have both conditions. 
But what causes hearing loss in the first place? Now I want to address this here really quick. So the whole point of this video is talking about why hearing aids are so expensive and why that's changing. And for them to kind of bring in, I'm a veteran myself, for them to bring in the, uh, the noise exposure and all the hearing loss and tinnitus that is happening with service members in the United States, the crazy thing is is that all service members get free hearing aids through the VA system. Now the quality of care is potentially hit or miss. Um, there's a lot of VA clinics out there that do a fantastic job of this. I'm sure that there are a few out there who maybe don't do so hot. Um, it's kind of like socialized medicine in a way. There are some potential concerns with the quality of care that is received there, but cost of care is not an issue for veterans. So why they would include that in this video in terms of prevalence of hearing loss is really surprising, honestly. It saddens me a little bit to know how long I went without being able to hear everything going on around me and how it was like opened up so many new doors around me like, oh, I didn't even know that was happening. I couldn't hear that. It's been life changing. I hear that literally all the time. Uh, never have I ever heard anyone say that, oh, I ended up treating my hearing loss too early or it didn't have an impact on my life. If, as long as hearing aids are the right hearing aids and they're fit and programmed appropriately to someone's hearing loss prescription, it is a life-changing experience. And when you really start to look at it, at least for her, um, this has given her her life back to a large degree, not just with her family and friends, but from a work perspective too. Um, you know, I know that the whole premise of this video is why hearing aids are so expensive, but those hearing aids that she got from Starkey, those are allowing her to continue on with her career, which will significantly increase her earning potential over the course of the rest of her life. And we know that individuals who can hear better actually earn more money because of it. And we know that the impact of untreated hearing loss is around $122 billion annually. So if you have untreated hearing loss, you are basically costing yourself money. At Starkey's Manufacturing Center in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, roughly 200 technicians are on hand to forge those ear molds into functioning devices and ship them to consumers. Between 25 to 40% of Starkey's hearing aids have some form of personal customization. Behind the ear devices are generally larger, but don't need custom fitting. So I wanna make sure I clarify this here. What he's talking about from a custom fitting standpoint is having a custom ear mold that goes inside of your ears. The receiver and canal hearing aids that he's talking about, they're typically very small and invisible. In fact, even more invisible than some custom in-ear hearing aids. The one thing that I wanna also clarify here is that all hearing aids, if they're prescription hearing aids, they need to be customized in the programming. So I think that specifically what he's talking about is having a custom molded product that goes inside of your ear. After scanning, technicians mold the digital shell using dedicated software to ensure the components fit properly inside. You see our parts, our circuitry, our faceplate with our battery. That digital file is then sent to a 3D printer where the outer casing is produced. It's almost like an ear print, if you will. Every shape is different for people, and even between the two ears, they're different. And in that case, we need a human to assemble those final components. During assembly, technicians using precision instruments add the final components, including the microphones, circuits, and receivers by hands. The entire process is completed in a day or two on average. I think that's an interesting point. A lot of people think that you just slap an amplifier, a microphone, and a speaker together, and there you go, you have a hearing aid. And that is clearly not how it works. A lot of these devices are custom built, and a lot of these devices are custom programmed. And really all you're seeing there is the manufacturing side of it. You're not looking at any of the research and development that goes behind these hearing aids, and you're not looking at any of the custom programming that you get from a hearing care professional that goes along with the pricing of these devices. So we'll see what they believe is the reason why hearing aids are so quote unquote expensive. But why are hearing aids so expensive? The global hearing aid market was valued at over $10 billion in 2021. Critics argue that the five largest manufacturers who control more than 90% of the market have kept prices unreasonably high. A typical pair of hearing aids in the U.S. goes for between $2,000 to $8,000, including fitting fees and follow-up services. Medicare and most private insurance plans don't cover the devices. The hearing aid industry has always been a monopoly. Manufacturing costs were low, which allowed the company, by virtue of their monopoly, to jack up prices, making it more expensive for consumers. 
and the monopoly still carries forward to today. So there was a lot of inaccuracies in what she was actually saying. So first and foremost, I would not consider the hearing aid manufacturing world a monopoly. A monopoly would mean that one company controls the entire means of production of everything and sale of it, and they can charge essentially whatever they want to. Um, it would be more similar to a oligopoly, which is where there's a small amount of companies that are in control of manufacturing and all of that stuff, but they all compete against each other. And she says that she acts like manufacturing is the only component to the pricing and, and allowing you to jack up prices. Just because you can have low manufacturing costs doesn't mean that that allows you to gouge people. Uh, it just really makes no sense. And it makes me question why they even asked her to comment on this because clearly she doesn't know what she's talking about. Darkey, which sells its products directly to hearing professionals, says that high price includes not just the device, but the assessment, fitting, and follow-up fees. Some of the complaints and misperceptions that often occur about the high cost of hearing aids is, is that in many cases, in the majority of cases, when a patient is paying for their hearing aids, they're paying for not only the technology, but the service. They are expensive, but I look at it from the approach of you're not just buying the hearing aid, you're buying the service of an audiologist. So this whole concept of expensive, I do sympathize with certain individuals who just cannot afford to spend thousands of dollars on hearing aids. But if I were to say um, in general that if I had a house that I was gonna sell you and it was a gorgeous house and it only cost $4,000, you would say, that's not expensive at all. That is totally worth it. On the other hand, if I was trying to sell you a stick of gum for $4,000, you'd be like, whoa, why is that so expensive? So expensive is relative. Now, when you start thinking about what hearing aids actually do, they completely give you your life back in terms of your ability to communicate, your ability to stay gainfully employed and all of that. And that's not even including the potential ramifications on dementia and cognitive decline later on down the road if you go with untreated hearing loss. So I don't believe with just blanketly saying that hearing aids are expensive. Now, I do think that in a lot of cases, if you are not getting excellent care from your hearing care professional, they are right. That is a component of the cost of hearing aids. It's not just the manufacturing and research and development that goes behind this technology. It is also how it is fit and programmed for you. So I would say this, is that if you're going to a hearing care professional who is not actually doing a really good job at fitting and programming those hearing aids for you and providing you with a lot of aftercare, then I would say, yeah, hearing aids are expensive. However, if you go to someone who is excellent at what they do, Ideally, they're gonna be able to find you something that works within your budget, and they're gonna be able to make those devices work really well. Hearing aids today come with over 300 components. Inside the Satamo, an acoustic chamber, engineers test Bluetooth wireless connectivity between two hearing aids. About 80% of people who have hearing aids wear one in both ears. The biggest challenge to our industry is that small custom devices and Bluetooth don't enable that communication between the two ears to go through the head. So we have to radiate that energy around the head. The larger devices can have larger antennas in them. The smaller the devices are, the more challenging that is. Engineers also inspect to see if they can withstand extreme conditions like dust buildup as well as impact against a hard surface. A drop test, which in a calibrated fashion can suspend the device and slam it down into the floor at a far greater force than would likely happen when a hearing aid user was actually wearing their devices. In what company officials refer to as its CSI lab, hearing aids are also tested for moisture resistance by being submerged in a meter deep column of water for half an hour. Another test gauges the durability of the device's interior components. Sometimes people get a little careless about ripping them out of their ear. And so we want to ensure that this very delicate structure, there's actually six little wires that are inside this tube. If they get frayed or kinked, it will stop functioning. The ear is a hostile work environment. It's exposed to the elements in real world environments where people are perspiring, they're getting rained on, they're sometimes forgetting and wearing their hearing aids when they step in the shower. So I think they did a pretty good job showing everything that goes into the development and the fitting and, and all the costs essentially 
of these hearing aids. Um, I think they kind of went in a weird order of showing that, but in general, you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff that actually goes into hearing aid development and what the cost is of those hearing aids. For the first time, Americans will be able to purchase hearing aids over the counter. The devices for people with mild to moderate hearing loss will have a lower maximum sound output than most prescription devices, cost less, and not require a medical exam. Illinois-based Soundworld Solutions has been making hearing devices since 2013. The hope is that in this country, the, the new category will have a tremendous effect in lowering the price, not only for the over-the-counter hearing aids, which will be low, but for also the traditional hearing aids. So I will say this, Soundworld Solutions sent me some of their products for me to essentially review. And I have to say that in my opinion, they're some of the worst products that exist. Now, uh, over-the-counter hearing aids have been around for a while. They're just called direct-to-consumer hearing aids. And in fact, I didn't even review them for my channel because that would give them more exposure and people would buy them even if I told them not to buy them. So I just decided not to do the review because they were really, really bad uh, in, in my opinion. And the other thing here that he said is that he believes that, that uh, over-the-counter hearing aids will reduce the cost of prescription level hearing aids as well. And that could not be further from the truth. Remember, we've had over the counter, they were just direct to consumer. You could literally buy the same exact devices that are called over the counter today. You could buy them for the past five to 10 years. So I don't really understand where people are getting this idea that prescription hearing aids are going to be lower in cost because we've already had devices out there that would have theoretically done the same thing to the prescription hearing aid category and it hasn't. Several other companies have since announced their entry into the market, including Bose, who partnered with Lexi Hearing, and Sony, who teamed up with Denmark's WS Audiology. Apple has added a hearing assistance feature to its AirPods Pro earbuds. I think we may enter into a garage band era where everyone thinks, oh, now there's over-the-counter hearing aids, I can make them and sell them. But it's a lot harder than it looks. The unattended consequences of over-the-counter is, you know, that $100 amplifier you see on Facebook because you looked up hearing aids or whatever it might be and they think wow I got the deal this is what I need and it's not even close that represents what is a you know a class 2 FDA approved medical device. That's the funny thing is that everybody thinks that you know just making hearing aids and selling them and making a bunch of money is super easy. It is a very high touch point industry. There are companies that come and go and they're like, oh my gosh, like we could disrupt that. Look at the margins that are on hearing aids. We could come in and, and do half the margin and make a killing because everyone would want those devices. And it just does not happen. You can't make hearing aids cheaper and just have people be like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. It is a very high touch point and Brandon Sawalich is absolutely correct. There are companies that have come and gone thinking they could do it easier, better, make a lot of money and they all literally leave because they can't make money because they underestimate how high touch point it is. I don't know how I did it as long as I did not being able to hear them. The ironic thing about this video is that Rachel, the individual that they highlighted in this video, she would not even be a candidate for over-the-counter hearing aids either. In fact, the reason that she has hearing aids is because there's a company out there, Starkey, who actually gave her hearing aids. Now, she could have afforded hearing aids most likely on her teacher's salary because not all hearing aids cost thousands of dollars. You can get prescription hearing aids that cost hundreds of dollars, maybe up to a thousand dollars if you're if you go for some of the more budget uh, conscious hearing aids that are out there and you can still get a professional fitting with them. And that means that you're gonna be spending a similar amount of money on a prescription hearing aid as you would an over-the-counter hearing aid. That being said, I am a fan of over-the-counter hearing aids. I think it is going to increase awareness of hearing loss. I think it potentially has the, the ability to increase adoption rates of hearing aids, but it will more likely than not act as a stepping stone from over-the-counter care to prescription care, which is what we saw in the optometry industry when readers became available over the counter. It led to a lot more individuals trying them, saying that, oh my gosh, this actually helps, but they wanted to take it to the next level. So they go see an optometrist and get prescription eyeglasses. So I think that that's pretty much what's gonna happen here with the hearing aid industry.
I think that there's going to be a lot of companies who come in thinking it's going to be easy to make a lot of money. They're going to see how hard it is to actually make money in the hearing aid industry, and they're going to end up leaving uh, with their tails between their legs. Now, I think that there's going to be some companies who come in and do this well, but ultimately, time will tell with that. Um, I've been very favorable to OTC over the past several years, ever since the Over the Counter Hearing Aid Act got signed into law back in 2017. But really, we just have to kind of take a wait and see approach to see what really ultimately happens with that. Overall, not that bad of a video by CNBC. I feel like it could have been structured better and, and better information given and have it tie in a little bit better with itself throughout the course of the video. But I appreciate the awareness that they're trying to spread on over the counter. And I appreciate that they actually went to a major hearing aid manufacturer to help give some clarity on why hearing aids might cost as much as they or prescription hearing aids might cost as much as they do uh, and why over the counter hearing aids potentially are cheaper. Other than that, I hope that that you liked today's reaction video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that as well and turn those notifications on so you get notified every single time I post a new video. Whoa.